Hello and welcome back. This time we're dealing with the board that failed inside the FX4CR and what I had to go through to replace it. As you know from the last video, I had powered up the FX4CR and got an incomplete screen and it was not responding to any controls, wasn't transmitting, wasn't receiving. The information that I exchanged with the maker, BG2FX, it came to the conclusion that the problem was this board which is the main board of this particular radio. Processor is here, a bunch of other circuitry over here. There's a little cross wire going here which meant somewhere along the line in this production run which was shipped to me in April uh, they came up with something. Whatever it was didn't last. The replacement board looks very similar to this one with the exception that this wire is gone. But now with this package being so compact had to figure out what was going on. The three tools that were necessary to get into this thing were a number eight Torx. I'll put it up here so it looks like I know what I'm doing. And a one and a half millimeter Allen wrench to take the small side panel off. Now I'm still partially disassembled here so I can show you what is going on on the inside of this beast. Turning it over now this is the RF deck part of it. You can tell because of all of the toroids and the relays and all of this other hoo-ha. And over here you see what appear to be the two vinyls. Now I'm going to turn this over on its side. Open this up by taking this side panel off using my eight number 8 Torx to get these couple of screws out for the purpose of this demonstration. Not that I think you need any instruction on how to turn righty tighty lefty loosey, but it's what it is. Now with that out, I can take this side panel off and separate this. Now, the RF deck is bolted to this metal frame, which is nicely machined out. I'm not going to totally disassemble it for right now, but the board that was changed out is the one with all these ribbon cables. Now BG2FX had sent me two fresh ribbon cables but there's this one ribbon cable that stays behind and this is the ribbon cable that goes from the main board to the RF deck over here. So the process of removing the board involved taking out a half a dozen Phillips screws which separated this board from this frame and then obviously putting the new board in very gingerly replacing these ribbon cables as well as this ribbon cable and putting this whole mess back together. One note I want to make here is to remind you that these finals are bolted to this metal frame which is totally internal. There's no air going through this thing. So even so the maker says you can push up to 20 watts through this beast I wouldn't run full throttle for a long time because after a while the heat has nowhere to go. That's just a um, mentioning of something that you may have to bear in mind when using this. Okay, now I'm going to put this back together carefully. Some of the fun and games I had was making sure that these ribbon cables would fold up nicely inside when this went back together. Now notice I didn't take the side panel off here with the antenna jack because that's bolted to the the antenna jack is bolted to the RF deck. There was no need to remove that. So I have to kind of catty quarter the board in here so that the sockets line up with the holes on the other side. And we want to make sure we're not bending any of the ribbon cables out of shape. And then before I start putting screws back together, I can place the side panel back on. Oh, error of omission. Before I do that, on the inside of this board you see this module here. This is the Wi-Fi module, or the, the, and the Bluetooth module rather. And this is the plate that's going to go on top of it. When you put this plate on, this plastic part which is open has to match where the antenna is for the Wi-Fi. Because if you don't do that, the Wi-Fi won't work worth a damn. So, just bear that in mind when we put that together. Now I'm going to carefully put this back in so that we're not gouging the ribbon cables. 
the holes fit into the side here, like that. We're going to come together here, like this. And now, this side plate is going to go onto here. And the screw that I took out, I'm going to put back in just so this, this thing holds together while I'm finishing up this video. Now, the whole thing was mostly trying to figure out what I had to take apart in order to get inside of this beast. Now, we're not going to power it up just yet because I want to put a few more screws in. But, understand that uh, you kind of sort of got limited space inside. And again, remember that uh, the final transistors in this radio don't have a huge amount of heat sinking going on. So, in as much as you may be tempted to want to run this thing full tilt, uh, unless you want to totally brick your uh, $500 radio, $550 radio USD when purchased directly from BG2FX, uh, you might want to have this thing last a little bit longer. Okay, bear with me while I do a couple of more screws. I know I'm not one of the more adept YouTubers that fast forward through all this noise. Uh, but I value your time as well. So I'm trying to just get enough in here so that I can show you the end result. Alright, maybe one on the other side. Like so. Just so that things aren't all flopping in the breeze. Okay. Uh, again, just so you know, uh, the manufacturer, BG2FX, was working very nicely with me and it took a while but he says he's a one-man outfit I'll take him at his word now let's see if this will end up the way I was hoping it would end up let's not draw parts all over the place dummy load here power, po power plug over here Turn on the electricity, which is always helpful. Invoke the electricity. And let's see if I make an idiot out of myself. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a full display. And the machine is working. Thank you very much for watching the video. Appreciate your time. Any questions, feel free to pop an email to n2gop at yahoo.com. Take care, be well, and stay safe.